JD, short for John Dorian, prepares for his first work day as an intern at Sacred Heart Hospital. He feels very nervous, but calms down by drawing a bra on his chest using whipped cream. We all react to stress differently. In the hospital, he meets with his best friend, Chris Turk, a surgeon intern. Two of them have been through hell together. That hell was medical school, where they were roommates. JD really likes rap music and asks Turk for an pass so that he can rap properly. But Turk refuses because JD is too white. Their negotiations are interrupted by Sacred Heart's chief doctor, Robert Kelso, who welcomes them in a family and states that any problem they have, they'll fix together, just like the family. This Kelso guy seems really cool. In the break room, JD meets Elliot Reed, another intern who is very competitive because every man in her family is a doctor, so she has a lot to prove. Next person JD meets is nurse Carla. He helps her push the patient to a room where Dr. Perry Cox is waiting. He tells JD to place IV, short for intravenous path. JD fails because he is fresh out of college intern who has bunch of theoretical knowledge but almost zero practical skills. Dr. Cox calls him useless and tells nurse Carla to do it. Later that day, Dr. Kelso is holding a round, in which he teaches interns about different diseases hospital patients have. Elliot is late. As a punishment, Dr. Kelso asks her a really hard question, to which she doesn't know the answer, but JD whispers to her the correct answer. Elliot is thankful, so JD decides to cash in and invite her on a date. Elliot accepts, proving chicks like bad guys. After this great victory, our hero decides to take a break and watch some TV. He deserved it, after all. On TV, JD watches a show where he and Elliot are married and have a child. As soon as the child leaves to play outside, they start to make another one, but are rudely interrupted by Dr. Cox, who ends JD's little fantasy and calls him useless yet again. JD asks Cox why he can't be more like that cool Kelso guy, to which Dr. Cox responds, Kelso is the worst human being on the planet, the Satan himself. But JD doesn't believe him, because it's all about family. Meanwhile, Turk is having a great day. He brags about how he held his hands inside someone's chest, which is a great accomplishment in the surgical world. JD becomes jealous of surgeons because they are jocks and ordinary doctors are chess players. Dr. Kelso decides to hold another round, but this time asks JD the question, who doesn't know the answer, so he looks at his future wife-to-be hoping for help, but she too doesn't know the answer, but somehow remembers it a few seconds later, when the same question is posed to her. JD feels betrayed. He compares his situation with being overrun by a truck. I think he's overreacting a little. JD decides to cancel his date and I guess the marriage with Elliot too. To relax after such defeat, JD decides to do paracentesis, another complicated procedure that requires a lot of manual skills. But this time, he isn't afraid, because Turk the jock is with him. JD thinks the needle required to do the procedure is too big. But what does he know? He is just a scared chess player. So his brave jock friend grabs the needle and completes the procedure. Unsuccessfully though, because the needle was in fact too small. Turk informs JD they should start seeing new people and breaks his roommate trip with him, which lasted through the entire medical school. Devastated, JD decides to clear his head by taking a hike in the hospital basement, but is interrupted by a beeper, a machine that signals one of the patients is in grave danger and requires life-saving defibrillation. When JD hears that sound, something inside him kicks in. He remembers the oath he gave to Hippocrates and his love for human life, which urged him to become the doctor in the first place. So he starts running as fast as hell, only to enter an even smaller basement, the basement's basement, to hide. But hiding space is already taken by Elliot, who is also hiding, as a true doctor should on his first day of work. JD finally confronts Elliot about her betrayal. But Elliot says she doesn't care because she's handsome. JD finally tells her he is withdrawing from the arranged date. Their conversation is, guess what, yes, interrupted by Dr. Cox, who calls them both useless. At the same time, Turk and nurse Carla are alone in the room kissing. Carla asks Turk to remove clothes, which he does with the speed of light. But when it's her turn to remove, she just laughs and leaves the room. Turk feels like he's been tricked. As if this day couldn't get any harder for JD, he can't go home because he's on the night call. Luckily, good old Dr. Kelso comforts him, but also gives him friendly advice on how he shouldn't put patients without money on kidney transplantation lists. Before JD's night shift starts, he is visited by Turk, who says his first day was terrible, and since the two of them are best friends, they should support each other, so they reforge the alliance and become roommates yet again. 
night call turns out to be extremely rough. When JD finally finds enough time to kill an eye, somebody decides to die. So now JD needs to call the time of death, but also call the family of the deceased. JD feels very bad, so he postpones the call. Night duty is finally over, and in the morning JD is confronted by Kelso, who finally shows his Satan form. He yells at JD because he didn't remove the patient without proper insurance from the kidney transplantation list. JD says the patient will most likely die without transplantation. But Kelso doesn't care, he refers to him and all the other interns as a bunch of scrubs, and then leaves in a satanic fury. JD is called to the emergency where Dr. Cox is helping the patient. The patient has hemothorax, a bunch of blood inside his chest. To save his life, complicated procedure which consists of removing the blood from the chest is required. Through the guidance of Dr. Cox, JD finally succeeds and saves the patient. Now, if you know anything about the medicine, you know how unrealistic this scene is. Somebody who can't place IV can easily aspirate blood from the thorax. Not in a million years. Also, he didn't use local anesthetic, he just cuts him open. I guess this guy doesn't feel pain. As JD is finally finishing his shift, Elliot apologizes. Tells him she informed the family of the deceased patient and kisses him on the cheek. JD forgives her and leaves the hospital proud, because he survived his first day at work and didn't look like a complete fool.